Jellies are really intriguing for lots of reasons. In many respects, they're really beautiful animals. The iridescence of tinafores and the beautiful color patterns of the muscle tissue of some jellies have rainbow colors and they can be extraordinarily pretty. Jellies also are perfectly adapted to a three-dimensional watery habitat. They can achieve remarkable sizes and some extraordinary shapes that allow them to function very differently than animals in any other habitat on Earth. Back in the days when we sampled the deep sea by dragging nets behind ships, we thought that the principal components of the deep sea communities were fish and squids and shrimps, animals that had hard bodies. Until very recently, we didn't appreciate that gelatinous animals comprise as much as 30, maybe 40 percent of the biomass in the deep sea water column. One of the reasons that we have been learning so much about jellyfish recently in the last several decades is basically because of the instrument that's behind me right now. Uh, robotic submarines, uh, person submersibles, various sorts of specialized deep diving equipment that allow us to take ourselves or to take our eyes in the form of a video signal down into the water and see what these animals are actually doing down there. Ventana it has been a really workhorse ROV for us. We've had that for upwards of 15 years now. It just celebrated its uh, 2,500th dive, which makes it the most used ROV on the planet. It has probably done more scientific dives than all other scientific ROVs combined. So it is truly a superstar in terms of deep sea research. Okay, head down. Three, two, one, begin transect. 1,000 meters, oxygen is 0.38. The kinds of work that we do on the Mantana fall into two or three categories. One of the most important things that we can do is to build a quantitative time series of information about the numbers and kinds of jellies in Monterey Bay over time. You know that we're seeing desiticas year-round. Is there any history of that in the past, of sort of year-round population? Not in our records. We also spend a lot of time using Ventana and its high-definition video camera to watch behavior patterns. Well, they often feed on detritus that settles out on the hairs on their long legs, and they'll bring them across their mouth and, and scrape the food off like that. And finally, we use the ROV to collect animals. One of the advantages of working on jellies is that they're blind and deaf. And they don't seem to mind at all when we fly up to them and zoom in with our lights and cameras and the whirring motors of the ROV. In fact, most of the time, they have no idea that they've been caught. All right. Bravo. That was beautiful. Way to go. The wonderful thing about the operations we have here at Mabari is that we have a deep water canyon that runs right off of shore. And so within an hour or two, we can be out into very deep water, which means that when we collect something from very deep water, we can be back to the lab within a few hours. That's something that nobody else on the planet can do. Yeah, his tentacles are in great shape. we get them back to the lab. What we do with them depends greatly on what we know about these animals. And often, we are the first people that have ever seen these animals alive with our own eyes. And so sometimes the very simplest of questions like, what does it eat? Or how does it eat? Or does it reproduce at what times? Or very simple uh, questions that you'd usually consider very fundamental naturalist questions that maybe a lot of people assume we already know about everything on the planet. 
we have absolutely no idea about what these jellyfish do. While we know a lot about jellies and are learning more at a pretty rapid pace, we've still only explored a tiny fraction of the deep ocean. And so we know relatively little about all the different kinds of jellies that are out there. So in terms of just discovering new kinds, there's a huge amount to be learned and the biodiversity of this planet will expand considerably once we are able to catalog the deep living jellies. The deep sea is a big place. Of the available space for an animal or a plant to live on the earth, over 95% is actually the deep sea. Mabari in Monterey Bay has studied maybe 1% of this bay and it is by far the best studied deep sea environment on the planet. And so we have little tiny dots of information, but we don't have large coverage. We don't have good information for large areas of the planet. Uh, this is true for jellyfish and everything else. When we're flying the Ventana down deep into the Monterey Canyon, I'm always hoping for something I can't expect. The one thing that uh, is gonna knock my socks off because it surprises me. That's part of the fun of exploration, is that you know that you're going to find new things, but you can't predict what they're going to be. What's that? Oh, it's a squid. This is somebody new. Whoa! Really white. We've never seen this guy before. <laughs>